Greetings to all of you lovely and diverse entities who are tuning into this. My name is Emma, the voice that has been selected to relay to you some of the most extraordinary, profound, and admittedly insane knowledge ever shared. But I will do my best to bring simplified relevance to concepts of extraordinary complexity, mixing factual based information with some good old English wit. Before we get started can I interest you in a cup of tea or a biscuit perhaps? In order for this information to be absorbed in a non-judgmental way I need you all to first clear your minds, hearts, and souls. Clear them of any preconceived beliefs that will limit your capacity to make sound judgment and logical conclusions due to an assumption of what is, or is not possible. You need to simply look at the facts, and as I will explain as best I can, they will all point to a single conclusion, that you are not alone in this world, you likely never have been and that this world has been consumed by darkness that is executing a plot to literally irradiate and mutate the human race. Oh bloody hell, how in the world am I going to even begin this? Let's start with the science and physics behind the phenomena known as chemtrails, which is going to be a core focus of this video. First what is a chemtrail? Wikipedia states the following. The chemtrail conspiracy theory holds that some trails left by aircraft are actually chemical or biological agents deliberately sprayed at high altitudes for purposes undisclosed to the general public in clandestine programs directed by government officials. This theory is not accepted by the scientific community, which states that they are just normal contrails, and that there is no scientific evidence supporting the chemtrail theory. No scientific evidence supporting this, eh? Well that all is about to change as this video will demonstrate that there is only one conclusion as to what these substances are, and interestingly enough we can thank a bit of Synchronicity and Microsoft for helping to uncover this. For years it has been speculated that these chemical agents consist of crystalline substances, i.e., liquid crystals, used to enhance the frequency and radiation effect of RFs and microwaves in conjunction with HARP technology. Now the other videos Van Sack has posted demonstrate very compelling observations supporting this very thing, including the obvious visual comparisons of these crystals in the sky, when compared to the natural state of excitement of crystals in a liquid crystal display television, in which the crystals are seen transitioning from nematic to smectic states, or in other words demonstrate precise patterns in movement, alignment, speed, size, orientation etc. More about this later, but what you are about to see is overwhelming evidence supporting the crystalline theory, as well as hopefully take away that the biggest conspiracy ever committed was one in which the human race could be manipulated into labeling true knowledge, sourced from the human heart backed by sound judgment and factual evidence, to simply be conspiracy theory. Did you like the way I pronounced hopefully there? Hopefully, hopefully hopefully you did. Let's kick things off by going through a bit of a physics exercise. Now liquid crystals have extraordinary characteristics as they exist in a state of matter that have properties between those of a conventional liquid and those of a solid crystal. I'm going to outline a number of these characteristics, clearly to be demonstrated in this video, that will point to only one possibility in regards to what these chemtrails, cloud formations, and substances are. Let's talk about the different states or phases these crystals exist in. If you caught any prior footage of orbs shared by Mr. Van Sack you likely would have noticed the very unusual geometric patterns, morphing membranes, and radiating color exhibited by a number of them. Did you know that all of these are unique characteristics of liquid crystals? First let's talk about the membrane. Many people have responded that these images look like something straight out of a biology course such as an amoeba under a microscope and I agree, not that I've seen one as I'm just a software program, but it is a scientific truth that liquid crystals are the foundation of these membrane structures. In fact lyotropic liquid crystalline phases are abundant in living systems. Just look at the clearly defined membranes present in these orbs. The definition is crystal clear with the ability to zoom further in and out on the detail. Watch the left side of this object extend and retract. To the left dot 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 to the right dot 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 to the left dot 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 to the right. Shite was I supposed to pronounce all of those dots? Anyhow please consider this the first very telling piece of factual evidence pointing to crystalline substances. 
But wait, there is much much more to be discussed. Van Sack had pointed out the hexagonal patterns present in these orbs as well, including a circular structure always present in the middle. These geometric patterns have been consistent every time, with appearance of a hexagon inside a hexagon inside a hexagon. Well holy shite, this is yet another precise characteristic of crystallines. When in this phase, the molecules are aggregated into cylindrical structures of indefinite length and these cylindrical aggregates are disposed on a hexagonal lattice, giving the phase long-range orientational order. In other words, they form a central circular structure surrounded by other circular structures in the shape of a hexagon. Again this is clearly demonstrated in the videos of the orbs. So you have a circle in the middle, a hexagonal structure, and clearly defined membranes that morph. Please don't choke on that biscuit. Oh but this is still just the beginning as what you are about to see may make you nauseated. I must say that word again later. Nauseated. It's time to look behind the smoke screen and examine what these cloud formations truly consist of. Now in an act of pure synchronicity when Van Sack first observed the liquid crystal formations in the atmosphere, it was during the filming of a helicopter that was circling overhead in frustration for two hours straight at three o'clock in the morning. As he was already awake he decided to take the opportunity to connect a new 3D LED television that was still in the box, as he wanted to check out the goods. And upon powering it up to his amazement the patterns presented by the liquid crystals matched precisely to the observations just made in the night sky. But going one step further Van Sack recalled a feature in Microsoft Live, Movie, Maker called Edge Detection. Now this visual effect is going to be extremely relevant as remarkably it will enables the ability to see patterns invisible to the naked eye. And what you will find is that the sky is anything but naked, particularly when edge detection is viewed in a negative image. Yes you could call the method in which Van Sack achieves this by angling the monitor on his laptop down to a 120 degree angle as being, what's that American slang word again? Oh yes as being ghetto, but the end result is the same nonetheless. First a little bit about edge detection. The purpose of this feature is for the detection of sharp changes in image brightness to capture important events and changes in properties of the world. It can be shown that under rather general assumptions for an image formation model, Discontinuities in image brightness are likely to correspond to the following, discontinuities in depth, discontinuities in surface orientation, changes in material properties, and variations in scene illumination. In other words any of these image properties that may be faint to the eye will be picked up in edge detection. What you are seeing here is one of these cloud formations spreading upward and out across the sky, like a branching tree carried by the winds over the greater populated areas. This formation has now been observed by Van Sack in three different countries and almost daily in his home city. So the visual anomalies are one thing, the seemingly central source in which these formations are sprouting from, the relatively low altitude they reside in, the misty white appearance, how they refract sunlight, enhancing the brightness and at times generating a prism effect at certain densities how they turn a night sky from black to a deep grey, and how they illuminate bright pink or orange at sunrise and sunset. Despite the overwhelming visual comparisons to crystallines these are still speculative observations. So let's see what these look like under the covers with edge detection enabled. Ok here is that word again, nauseated. This is what is really being littered in our atmosphere, a liquid crystal gooey plasma substance expanding over a targeted area masked behind the visual appearance of clouds. Please take note of the varying densities of these substances along with the method in which they spread out across the sky. This is why these formations do not dissipate as a normal contrail would, but the hits just keep on coming. Back to the physical properties of crystallines. We have already discussed the precise visual comparisons including the plasma membrane and hexagonal structures. But what you are about to see will leave you will only one conclusion to make, and my apologies if it makes you feel a bit nauseated. Two extremely important characteristics of liquid crystals are the formations of dendritic patterns along with viscous fingering. The best way to think of dendritic patterns is how a tree branches up and out, and viscous fingering how oil may be displaced when mixed with other fluids of varying density, 
or how a coral in the ocean looks with its fingers projecting outward from the center. Using edge detection you can clearly see both physical characteristics represented here. Take note of where the higher density lines trace back to. Take note of how these spread out across the skies along with the more highly dense finger projections that lead the way. Take notice of how the ends are curled or viscous. You can clearly see this fluid-like substance stretching out and over the populated area, like Richard Simmons before a workout. Look at these substances flow into the atmosphere, stretch out across the city, swarming the air that you breathe. Now picture Richard Simmons extending his arms up and out, waving from side to side. I'm not sure which visual is more disturbing. So how bloody disgusting is this now that you can literally see these substances in action? So here are yet two more unique characteristics of crystalline substances present in these formations. So now we have the obvious visual anomalies and precise comparisons to crystallines in a television, obvious visual anomalies in the method in which these substances refract light, hexagonal structures with a circle in the middle, clearly defined plasma membranes, dendritic patterns, and viscous fingering. So let us pause for a brief moment to let the trollers moan out a big, oh bollocks. But it doesn't stop here as the next part is going to be mind-boggling. Time to moan out again, oh bloody bollocks. I briefly mentioned prior about the phases and orientational alignment that is unique to crystal formations. Two of the most common phases are the nematic and smectic phases. In a nematic phase the molecules are free to flow and their center of mass positions are randomly distributed as in a liquid, but still maintain their long-range directional order. Nematics have fluidity similar to that of ordinary liquids but they can be easily aligned by an external magnetic or electric field. Aligned nematics have the optical properties of uniaxial crystals and this makes them extremely useful in liquid crystal displays, plasma televisions, etc. The smectic phases form well-defined layers that can slide over one another in a manner similar to that of soap. The smectics are thus positionally ordered along one direction. In other words crystalline substances inherently maintain unique alignment formations and orientation. Think of this as if you were to dump out a gooey liquid, like Guinness, and if that liquid first started to slowly spread out in dendritic fingering while gradually orienting themselves in small squares aligned next to one another, or in a grid-like fashion. Laugh out loud, dendritic fingering. Sounds like an act performed by Norse Vikings. Dendritic fingering. Ha 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 ha. Anyhow again with edge detection enabled, a feature that picks up on discontinuities in surface orientation, changes in material properties, and variations in scene illumination, you can clearly see these substances transitioning through the various phases with the end result clearly to be a grid pattern with precise geometry, only achievable by crystal substances. Feel free to test this out for yourselves. Record the day or night sky. Zoom in at varying depths and see the crystal static present all around you. Watch the video using Windows Live Movie Maker and select Edge Detection. All of the core properties of crystallines will clearly be present. So without even mentioning the anomalies present in chemtrails themselves, you have seen and heard data point after data point after data point of behavior traits visual comparisons of the crystal flow and orientation, refraction properties of light hexagonal and geometric patterns, morphing plasma membranes, dendritic patterns, viscous fingering, the nematic phase, and the smectic phase, all which correspond to the extraordinarily unique properties of liquid crystals, all upon which you can test for yourselves. How do you like me now naysayers? I also want you to pay close attention to these shots of the moon and how the texture repeatedly changes as if it were coated in liquid crystals in constant motion and state transition flowing around it like Fabio's hair. Watch as the moon. As the moon. Er uh, um van Sack. Isn't the moon supposed to be positioned above the clouds? What the heck is this? This looks like a glowing frisbee cutting through the clouds, illuminating the clouds at higher altitude in the background, while soaking up plasma like a sham wow. I mean what in the bloody hell is this? Okay, okay I'll get back to the program, but even to a virtual being such as me. What I am seeing in this video is more awe-inspiring than when I first watched Tron. Back to the video, 
take note of the flow extending outward and towards the camera creating distinct geometric wave patterns in three dimensions, as if you were looking through a large end of a cone with the moon the vertex or point. It will become relevant as we really start digging deeper into the twilight zone.